Welcome back to the third hour of our program. Arguably the biggest defeat, probably short of losing his casinos. I mean, who can't run a casino profitably? Has this ever happened in the history of the world? Well, yeah, Donald Trump couldn't. But outside of that, probably the biggest defeat Donald Trump has experienced in his career as a grifter uh, was Trump University. And the guy who brought him down is on the line with us right now, Art Cohen. He's an entrepreneur, former student at, uh, at Trump University. He's the author with Dan Good of the new book, Trump You, Promises, Lies, and Corruption, My Battle with Donald Trump's Fake University. Art Cohen author, C-O-H-E-N author.com is the website. Art Cohen author is also his Twitter handle. Art, welcome to the program. Congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. My pleasure, and congratulations both on, on you know, bringing down Trump's scam and saving thousands of other people from losing their money like you, like you did, and on publishing this brilliant book about it. Um, so, first of all, you filed a RICO suit against Donald Trump. I didn't know that individuals could even file RICO suits. I thought that's something that required a state attorney general. Um, to inform, this is a racketeering influenced corrupt organization. Isn't that what RICO stands for? And if so, you know, fill us in on how that worked. Yeah, sure, sure thing. Uh, absolutely, that's what it stands for. It's a civil suit. Uh, what you're talking about normally that's filed by the state is usually a criminal. So ah. we were filing a civil suit because my fiduciary duty was to get as much money back of the students that they had put in. At the end of the day, we got back 90 cents on the dollar. Wow. So we got most of the money back to all the students. It was over 6,000 of them. The crime of it all is how long it took. It didn't have to take for so long. How long did it take? Uh, but the, it took, uh, well, we filed the suit in 2013. Uh, the actual money went into people's pockets six years later, um, or uh, roughly well, five years later in April of 2018. And then again, uh, additional uh, pot was uh, let go in January 2019. So when you filed this lawsuit, Donald Trump was simply the guy, the go-to guy on national media to talk about how Barack Obama wasn't a real, a real American. He was a secret Muslim Kenyan. That's right. And when I signed up for Trump University in 2009, um, he was a, uh, a real estate master and he was somebody that uh, looked like something that uh, was a worthwhile investment. I mean, some... Um, uh, would say that I invested more in Trump, almost $40,000 into his program, believing in what he said. Unfortunately, it was all promises, lies, and quite a bit of corruption, as I learned from after filing the suit itself. Did you learn anything from Trump University? I mean, did that, was there anything actually useful or meaningful that you got out of the time that you were there? And if so, I'm curious what it might be. Well, I, I learned something about, in the process, I learned in suing him, um, the just uh, how going through the justice system and how difficult it was uh, to get justice because of the constant delays uh, throughout the process. Yeah. Uh, so the main also, thing you learned was how to sue him. Okay, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Yes, yes, that was that is true. Uh, but I also learned the the, the justice system itself um, how it favors those. Uh, with uh, incredible amounts of money, those are the wealthy. Sure. So uh, we were in a unique position working with a uh, law firm, Robin Gellers and Dodd, that, uh, and uh, another, two, actually two law firms we were working with uh, that were uh, on our behalf of all the students as a class action suit. And as such, we had a tremendous uh, advantage because our law firm uh, had the pockets, the deep pockets, uh, to uh, withstand the constant uh, 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 objections uh, to even bring forward an expert witness. We would bring forward an expert witness. They would object to that witness. The court would rule in our favor after a hearing. And then after the hearing, they would then appeal it. Then we'd have to respond to that appeal, so forth and so on. This is why it took so long. So it was sitting in Judge Coriel's court, probably it was, it was actually he said it was the uh, except for one case, it was the longest uh, case that was sitting in his court. Well, this has been his strategy throughout his career, is just drag it on and drag it on and drain people of their resources, hiring their lawyers. It's, 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 it's pretty crazy. You wrote that uh, Trump expects his lawyers and underlings to do everything he asks, including breaking the law. And right. uh, tell us about that. 
Well, you know, I, I uh, attended the actual his actual deposition uh, as a lead plaintiff. Um, I was a party, so I was at the deposition remotely on December 10th, 2015. And during that deposition, um, there was a break, and he left the room uh, along with his attorney, came back in. There were still other people in the room, but un, uh, unbeknownst to him, he started talking to his attorney about different things, and the mic was hot. And during that period of time, he told his attorney, um, and this is in the book, and, 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 the full, um, and, and, and there's a full transcript of that entire discussion in the book, but one of the key parts of that was he goes to him and he says, talk to the judge or talk to him about that thing about him. What's that thing? To this day, we don't know what that thing is. But so he had blackmail know, on the judge? It, it, it was implied in that speech. Yes. Wow. Wow. And, and this is and, and so, you know, this scared the heck out of me at the time, as you can imagine. And uh, there were some attorney confidential conversations about this matter. And uh, but we believe that the judge was beyond reproach. But what did happen in May of 2016, we had a hearing. And during that hearing, Trump's attorneys argued that he can't go to trial in August. We had an August set trial date. And now, could you imagine if the trial actually happened in August of 2016? He would have been tied up for at least with all the witnesses for at least two months, August, September, maybe October. That would have uh, potentially derailed or certainly made it difficult uh, to run his campaign. Well, that's not my opinion. That's what his attorney argued in court. Wow. His attorney argued he cannot continue his campaign if, he, if we have a trial in August. We need to delay the trial. Well, the court came back and gave a ruling and did delay the trial until after uh, the election in November, saying, oh, it'll be easier on the jury. It's going to be a circus and so forth. Well, so, so common judge, sense, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, finish your thought. Yeah, as a, I was going to say, common sense tells you it's, you're not gonna, it's not going to be easier to pick a jury after an election, whether he won or lost, than it was before an election. Plus, we as a public had a right to know the fraud that he was committing uh, and his financial background that all would have been brought out during the Trump University trial. Right. So Judge Curiel, the guy that Trump slandered later, you know, calling him a Mexican judge and all this stuff. I mean, he was born in Ohio, as I recall. Um, uh, but he actually cut Trump some slack. He, he, was, he was not a partisan actor in this thing. He was just being a judge who was doing what he thought was the best way to be a judge. Is that, is that your characterization of him, your understanding? That's correct. Judge Curiel was doing his job and uh, Trump was attacking him in the public. And unfortunately, uh, the court, as you know, uh, does not uh, respond to the, not, does not respond to that. Uh, they just handle everything within the court. And I w did not go out in the public uh, because I was instructed n not to. It was not in the best interest of the students. It was my fiduciary responsibility to get the money back for the students. Right. It wasn't my, you know, I wasn't to go out to the public and start talking to the press at that time. You, um, but yeah, you, you also write in your book, we're talking with uh, Art Cohen. He's got a new book out called Trump You, Y-O-U, uh, Promises, Lies, and Corruption, My Battle, Battle with Donald Trump's Fake University. Um, in the book, you write about uh, Alan Weisselberg, the guy who's kind of at the center of everything right now, the guy that if he flips, Trump is screwed. And if he doesn't flip, he or his children may go to prison. Uh, tell us about Alan Weissen, Weisselberg's uh, role in all this. Well, you know, he act, was acting CFO for the uh, Trump University uh, firm. So as such, when we were going through the depositions in June of uh, 20, uh, I believe it was 2015, we uh, deposed Alan Weisselberg. And what you'll find in the book on chapter, uh, what, what was remarkable about that deposition that we didn't know today is that, um, or we didn't know until today, is that he made certain statements that said that Trump was in control of all his actions with regards to the financial matters. Now, not just matters related to Trump University, but matters related to all financial matters. And that's how the question was asked, asked by my attorney. Mm -hmm. So this deposition uh, has been, it was, I believe, filed with the court. 
uh, and certainly there's uh, certain uh, tr uh, transcripts that are out there that are related to it, um, but it's never been really published anywhere, and I believe implicates Trump because if if the uh, you have uh, Alan Weisselberg saying that everything I did was with the knowledge and direction of Donald Trump with regards to financial matters and investment matters, and he's going out and cheating on taxes and doing these other things, and Mr. Weisselberg is indicted, then why is Donald Trump not indicted? Yeah. Donald Trump should be indicted now. So, as such, just recently, and this is a little bit of news, I um, sent those papers, those documents, um, uh, to the uh, New York Attorney General, uh, Letitia Le James. James, yep, mm -hmm. and also to uh, Cy Vance, the uh, Manhattan DA. So those are uh, should be arriving on their desks in the next couple of days. Oh, interesting, because they're both going yeah. after Weisselberg, and and based on Weisselberg's testimony under oath in your deposition, um, anything that they go after him for, they should be going after Trump for. That's that's correct, and everything like that, and everything else in my book is corroborated in a notes section. So um, I tell you where to find that documentation, but I will tell you that it was not easy to find. Uh, it was um, buried in a um, in a brief that one of that one of my attorneys filed, uh, Jason Forge. He filed it, and when he filed that brief in there, he references the uh, the deposition and parts of that deposition which are in the book. So that's what you're reading there. And uh, that's what I forwarded to the AG. Because yeah, it's absolutely not easy fascinating. to find. You, 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 yeah, so. Absolutely fascinating. Art Cohen, he's got a new book out called Trump You, Y-O-U, uh, Promises, Lies, and Corruption, My Battle with Donald Trump's Fake University. And uh, it's, it's brilliant. Uh, Art, keep up the great work. And thanks for dropping by today and sharing it with us. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, I hope the book does really well, and I hope that uh, Donald Trump can eventually be held accountable in larger venues. Thank you.